Underneath the major four football-playing NCAA conferences sits a group of five athletic conferences known as, well, the group of five. These conferences, the American Athletic Conference, Conference USA, the Sun Belt, the Mountain West, and the Mid-American Conference, are made up of schools that generally have smaller enrollments than the Power Five schools and or tend to operate under smaller athletic department budgets. They're often considered the underdogs of the college sports world, and for good reason. Bigger conferences tend to take new members from these conferences as schools cultivate larger student alumni bases or athletic departments. Case in point, UCF, Houston, Cincinnati, and SMU were all American schools a year ago, and by next year, all of which will be in the new Power Four. But one conference in particular hasn't seen its members thrown around in conversations for jumping up to power conferences. Its members, by and large, seem to have stayed fairly consistent throughout their time as a major Division 1A or FBS conference. This is the Mid-American Conference, made up entirely of schools focused in the Great Lakes region of the United States. It has gained a reputation as one of the more goofy conferences in college sports, with six of its 12 members located in the state of Ohio and featuring interesting gimmicks to capture leftover attention, like playing football games on weeknights. But while the conference has gained a reputation for its consistency, a quick look into their history reveals a conference that has played musical chairs with its members quite like the rest of the collegiate sports world since its founding after World War II, and even featured some interesting members not too long ago into the past. Let's take a look into the history of the MAC. The MAC, like most Group of Five conferences, is relatively young. It was established as a five-team league in 1946 as an uptick of young men going to college correlated with an uptick in the desire for college sports. Its first five members were Cincinnati, Butler, the University of Ohio, Wayne University, and Western Reserve University, though Wayne left after the first year. It slowly began to expand over the next few seasons as college athletic programs came into their own. Miami of Ohio and Western Michigan joined in 1948, followed by Toledo in 1950 to replace the outgoing Butler, Kent State in 1951, and Bowling Green State in 1952. It was around this time that Cincy started its climb in prestige, but with a weird start. The MAC began mandating that its team schedule five conference games per season, which athletic director and president Raymond Walters didn't like, so they willingly resigned membership in 1953 to go be an independent. Western Reserve, before their eventual change to Case Western Reserve, had planned to leave the conference as well, so before their departure in 1955, the conference added Marshall in 1954. From their beginnings in 1946 to 1968, the conference's sports teams started to grow into their own. Starting with football, the conference traded undefeated to one-loss teams for years, with Cincinnati and Miami running the conference for the most part until Cincy's departure, after which BGSU picked up the slack. Despite posting good records, no MAC team made a bid for the national championship, something that would become a running theme for the conference. Men's basketball featured a similarly rotating ring of champions following Cincy's exit, with Miami taking home much of the winnings. Baseball is a different story, though, with the Broncos of Western Michigan running the conference for much of its infancy. The Broncos faced Wake Forest for the national title game in 1955, but lost. Western Michigan actually did win national championships in cross country as members of the MAC in 1964 and 1965. The 70s saw the conference expand further into Michigan, adding Central and Eastern Michigan in 1972. The very next year, the conference expanded further west to encompass most of the Great Lakes states, adding Ball State and Muncie, Indiana, and Northern Illinois into Cobb. They stayed like this for a while until MIU left in 1986 on a 10-year hiatus as an independent and then as a member of the Big West from 1993 to their reintroduction to the MAC in 1997. Akron joined the conference in 1992. The MAC briefly became the biggest conference in college sports with the additions of Marshall and Buffalo in 1998. Marshall had spent the last few years dominating Division 2A, which is now FCS, largely off the backs of football stars like Randy Moss and Chad Pennington. Mac was glad to re-expand their footprint to West Virginia and bring the thundering herd back. But West Virginia wasn't the furthest south the Mac had interest in expanding. <laughs> 
Four years later, in 2002, the conference got weird. Central Florida, the program on rocket fuel, had spent the majority of its time in Division I-A FBS as an independent due to its membership in the non-football Atlantic Sun Conference for the rest of its sports. Scheduling as an independent in 2002 was easy for the Notre Dames of the world, but tough for smaller schools still growing like UCF. A conference they played consistently was the MAC. At the same time, Marshall was considering leaving the MAC again to move to Conference USA. Sending a package to multiple conferences and likely hearing scuttlebutt about Marshall's perceived impending departure, UCF AD Steve Sloan, per FM 96.9 The Game, made sure to send his permission for expansion to a league made up entirely of Great Lakes schools thousands of miles away. Ironically enough, MAC Commissioner Rick Christ was the only one who had any interest. MAC teams had, up to that point, somewhat struggled to retain recruiting advantages in the state of Florida, which had a wealth of football talent but no real football programs that were middle tier. If football players didn't land at Miami, Florida, or FSU in the upper tier, they either had to play at the FCS level or lower, or play for struggling teams like Florida Atlantic, which started play in 2001, or Florida International, which started in 2002. But even those teams started at the FCS level. Their other alternative was to leave the state. Chris figured, if they were going to leave the state anyway, why not play in Ohio or Michigan? And playing a team in Florida consistently would increase the conference's visibility in the state, which would in turn hopefully bring more Florida recruits to the MAC. Marshall's wandering eye was sated a bit as CUSA decided not to go through with its expansion plan that included Marshall with USF and Navy, so they would, at least for now, apparently remain the conference's 13th member. With that, Chris devised a five-year plan that would allow UCF to play as an associate 14th member of the conference starting in 2002. Ironically enough, neither Marshall nor UCF would stay to the extent of their five-year plan. They both left for Conference USA in 2005 to become all sports members, leaving the MAC with 12 members again. Still set on expansion, the MAC added Big East Outcast Temple as a football-only member in 2005, though they would eventually return to the struggling Big East as it lost members in 2012. Since its expansion efforts slowed down near the end of the 2000s, the MAC began to slide into its place in the collegiate sports world. It implemented a football championship game in 1997 with its growth, which was initially held at the home of the team with the better record until 2004, where it was moved to Ford Field in Detroit. It's had its fair share of unique bowl tie-ins, like the ill-fated International Bowl held in Toronto, Canada, which was the second ever international bowl game in NCAA history following Cuba's Bacardi Bowl in 1937. Despite pitting MAC teams against the Big East four separate times, the MAC never won an international bowl. MAC football has built its image as that of a sort of origin point of football in a lot of ways. One of these ways is in the tendencies of its teams to start the careers of excellent football coaches, with Miami of Ohio even earning the nickname the Cradle of Coaches, having coaches like Ara Parsegian, Paul Brown, Woody Hayes, Ron Zook, John Harbaugh, and Sean McVay walk their sidelines. But it's also built its image as a bit of the weirdo of college football. Ball State, its Indiana school, was made by people who made mason jars. No, I'm serious, look that up. Heck, Toledo has an actual rocket outside its football stadium pointed directly at Bowling Green. One of its more famous innovations is that of weeknight maction, where the conference schedules conference games in the middle of the week, often on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, at a convenient time where they are the only college football being played. If you want to watch college football on a November Wednesday afternoon, your options are a MAC game or nothing. It was a lucrative idea to formulate the agreement with ESPN to increase the conference's value way back in 2014, and it's stuck ever since. With the introduction of a basketball tournament in 1980 coinciding with the Women's Basketball League two years later, the winner of the tournament received an automatic bid to March Madness. Ball State won a majority of the conference titles before the turn of the millennium, winning the conference tournament six times from 1980 to 1999, and they're currently tied for the lead of the most conference tournament wins at seven with Ohio and Kent State. It's been held at Cleveland since 2000. The women's tournament started in 1982 and is also held in Cleveland. Bowling Green runs the women's tourney with 11 total tournament victories. The first Energy Mac Basketball Tournament returns to Cleveland's Quicken Loans Arena, March 9th through the 12th, as the top men's and women's teams battle for an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Plus, stop by the Mac Fan Fest, presented by PNC at Tower City Center, before every game for inflatables, autographs, and more. Baseball also started their tournament at a similar time in 1981. Like basketball, the winner of the conference tournament receives an automatic bid to the NCAA Baseball Tournament and a shot at the College World Series, 
though no MAC team has won a World Series yet. Kent State leads the baseball totals with 12 total tourney wins, dominating the conference. The next closest are Central and Eastern Michigan with four. I mentioned cross country earlier, and the MAC has held cross country championships since its inception in 1946. But since 1986, Eastern Michigan has won the men's title 23 times. The women's league is a little more staggered, but the Eagles have also won five straight titles there as well. As one would guess, they do well in track too. Akron won the men's soccer national championship in 2010, but the MAC discontinued its soccer league in 2022, so they'll have to win another one somewhere else. Bowling Green won a natty in ice hockey in 1984. During this age of conference movement, the MAC gained a bit of a reputation as a beacon of consistency, but even just 10 years ago, this wasn't true. When Temple rejoined the Big East in 2012 before it became the American, the MAC wanted to keep an Eastern flagship to pair with Buffalo. So they looked towards FCS UMass to keep an Eastern presence. The Minutemen joined as football members in 2012 in their quest to compete in the FBS. This was a catastrophic failure for the Minutemen and the MAC both, however, as their addition brought the MAC to an uneven 13 members with UMass sitting in a seven member East division. The team went one and 11 in 2012 and 2013 and three and nine in 2014 and 2015 before leaving to become an independent leaving the team with a complete record of 8-40 and 40 while members of the Mid-American Conference. Realignment rumors became quiet after UMass's departure, with the majority of rumors being unsubstantiated online pieces connecting the conference to Northern Iowa or the Dakota schools or occasionally Youngstown State. However, they weren't left alone for long. Following Oklahoma and Texas's intentions to leave the Big 12 coming to light, the college world began to realign itself considerably. The Big 12 backfilled with three American conference teams, leading the American to backfill with Conference USA teams. Three other Conference USA teams left for the Sun Belt as well. This left Conference USA considerably weakened and vulnerable to further poaching with only five members left. Two of those members were Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee, who many saw as tied to the hip due to their rivalry. Of the two, Western Kentucky was the most open to leaving CUSA, with some reports making it seem as though the Hilltoppers desperately wanted out. Their preferred landing spot was the MAC, with their members being close in location. But them alone leaving would put the MAC again at an uneven number of schools at 13, which was something the conference wanted to avoid if possible, so they'd really only go if MTSU went with them. Expansion talks were held and very close to going through per Brett Murphy, but the Raiders waffled around a bit and got cold feet waiting for the CUSA to add four new schools and then announcing their intentions to stay, hanging Western Kentucky completely out to dry. Conference USA Commissioner Judy McLeod was sure to make concessions for the Hilltoppers, even going so far as to provide some lip service that might be considered a smack in the face. One can read between the lines to see that Western Kentucky is not happy to be in the zombie CUSA, so there is still a possibility they join the MAC at a future date. So, despite its many changes in the past, the MAC looks to be one of the more secure group of five conferences in college sports, owing its longevity to its convenient location with many suitable colleges nearby. And while it doesn't necessarily play great sports, the teams it does play are entertaining, and are even capable of producing national champions every so often. Its core nucleus of member institutions, though it has changed a bit, remains largely the same, and its members are happy to be where they are. While it might be disingenuous to call the MAC an unchanging conference given its many changes, especially early on, its stability and consistency is one that should remain largely unchanged going into the future. While the college sports world might change a lot around it, it changes just a little, just enough to keep up. But it certainly won't rest on its laurels. In a lot of ways, it's America's underdog conference.